I started my career out as a teacher in the Boston Public Schools. I taught high school math, and I loved every single day of it. And for all you educators out there, I think you'll agree with me when I tell everyone in this room that I think that education and teaching is probably one of the hardest professions out there. <laughs> what makes it hard is that it's dynamic by nature, that it's dependent on constantly changing human interactions. For instance, I would take my best lesson and teach it to my first period class, and that in that class, about 25 out of 30 students would get it. And in that second period class, I'd do the exact same thing, and then only five out of 30 students would get it. And then throughout the day, I had to take my lesson and adjust it to each individual class. And then when I got good at it, I had to do the same thing for each individual student within each individual class. And it was that dynamic nature that challenged me then and still challenges me 15 years later in how we're trying to improve public education here in the United States. So I found it odd that my assistant principal when I was teaching in Boston would come to my door every single day and knock on the door and peek his head in and say, Mr. Seacat, I want to make sure that you're on chapter four, section three today. <laughs> I'd look kind of annoyed as usual that he just interrupted me in the middle of my lecture. And then I would kind of nod my head, not saying yes or no. <laughs> and then he'd look at me with these eyes like, hey, man, I'm just trying to do my job. And then we both had this mutual understanding. And then he'd walk off to the next class, and I heard him knock on the next door. And I just went on and taught. I found it odd that someone from some central office was able to determine that it would take me exactly two days to complete chapter four, section three. They never met me, never met my students, but yet they decided that that's exactly how it would take for all the students in the city of Boston. So a couple of years later, I was given the opportunity to start my own school with some great educators who wanted to create a brand new school system. And at the center of our design process, we wanted to empower those closest to the learning moment. Then it was our principals and our teachers with true decision-making rights. Because they had all the information that they needed to make decisions about learning. And the problem that we were trying to solve is twofold. One, we wanted to solve a problem that all of you are aware of. The education system in our country continues to decline. We are now below average in some global rankings in math, reading, or science. And the group of people that I was working with were not happy about that. Additionally, there was this college attainment gap by income that we were very passionate about. That if your family makes $100,000 or more, your, your child has a 73% chance of graduating from a four-year university. But if you make $62,000 or less, that drops significantly to 15% or lower. And in a public education system, it's unfair that anyone could go to a public school and have completely different odds in if they're going to graduate from college or not. So that's what my team and I did. We wanted to solve this problem, and a national problem in our public education system. And we did that by empowering those closest to the learning moment, our teachers and our principals. So this is what we did. We gave our teachers the ability to choose their own curriculum, to curate their own curriculum, to even uh, create their own curriculum. We gave them the ability to pace out their curriculum as they saw fit, because they know the students in front of them. And we also gave them true purchasing power rights, where they can buy things without getting five levels of approvals to solve the problems immediately uh, that's happening in the classroom. And what our teachers did was they created a four-year sequence in every discipline that out, outlived my imaginations. And in three short years, our school became the number one school in the city of Chicago, and nine out of the top 10 schools in the city of Chicago came from our system, just by empowering our teachers with true decision-making rights. And this is what the school looked like. So if you see these results, we now have increased the amount of students who, have, who are from low-income neighborhoods or middle-income neighborhoods and increase that percentage up to 45% of our students are now graduating from a four-year university. <laughs> and we're pretty happy with that progress, but it's nowhere near that 73% where we're really going to close that gap. So we thought long and hard about what we can do. And we thought about it and we said, you know, while we 
we figured out how to change the teaching profession, the student experience fundamentally stayed the same. The student still waited for the teacher to deliver them information. The student, when they had a question, had to wait for the teacher to give them an answer. And if we were going to make that next breakthrough from 45% to 73%, we needed to fundamentally change that student experience. And at the same time, I started thinking about a student of mine in Boston named Melody. Uh, she was one of those positive energy students who would sit in the corner and completely checked out. Right? She just didn't want to do math. And I was teaching uh, factoring polynomials. They kind of look like this. And if this, you, to solve it, you had to do this reversed FOIL method to figure out what the factors were. And that's the best I could explain it then, and that's the best I could explain it now. Uh, and that's probably why my students struggled for three straight days with it. And out of desperation, I called a friend. And I said, hey, you know, my students are struggling with this. What else can I do? And they said, how about you try to visually represent it with algebra tiles? And I said, OK, let me try that. So I brought the algebra tiles into class, put them, on the put them into the class, put them on the board, and immediately I saw Melody perk up in class. She's someone who just never paid attention, by the way. And she immediately picked up on something. I knew she got something. And when it was time for our class competition, Melody, out of all people, stood up, grabbed the algebra tiles, and walked up to conf with confidence and beat every single student in that class, even some of the smartest students in the, in the, in the room. And the best part was, was she was high-fiving everybody. <laughs> she was beaming with pride. She even shrilled with, with excitement because she figured something else out that no one else could. And her smile would have lit up this whole entire room easily. But the worst part about all of this is that she did not feel successful and confident enough to, uh, and frequently enough. She ended up dropping out of school only four months later at the end of her freshman year because she felt more like a failure in class than a true genius or someone who could understand something. And I often wonder, if I were able to find those algebra tiles faster, would she have felt more successful in, in school and would she have stayed in? If I was able to see her true genius and bring it out of her and cultivate it faster, would she have felt more confident and would she have not have dropped out? Maybe even if I gave Melody the ability to choose her own curriculum, would she be able to find those algebra tiles faster than I could have gotten to her and then she would have loved math? But no, she had to wait for me as a teacher. And that's when I wondered about our next model and I wondered what if what if we created a school where students had the ability to choose where they learn, when they learn, and how they learn? Would they choose uh, an experience that would be more successful for them faster than I could have done it as a teacher or a principal or a central office bureaucrat? Well, that's what we did. Two years ago, a team of uh, educators the University of Southern California, and some real cutting-edge technology came together to build a brand new school and a brand new school system in downtown Los Angeles that empowers students with, and teachers with the ability to choose where they learn, when they learn, and how they learn. And given that choice, I've seen our students create some amazing learning experiences. I have a student named Eileen who will take her biology curriculum and go through it four times over in one quarter. The first time, she'll just scan it. The second time, she'll answer all the questions. The third time, she's going to learn from her mistakes. And then the fourth time, she's going to master every single topic so she gets the grade that she wants. She created a school experience that works for her, and we could have never have done that in a traditional model. I have a student named Aravion who's a struggling reader. And what he created for himself was uninterrupted time where he could just sit in a comfortable setting, practice his reading, and get feedback from a teacher when he needs it so that he now is more confident about his reading. And now I've seen him more engaged in text than I've ever seen before. He's created a school system that, and a school experience that works for him. And I remember walking into a classroom once and seeing Chastity. She absorbed what the teacher taught her, and, in, and before she started on her projects and her assignments, she just got online and Googled five other teachers who taught the exact same subject from around the world, found one that worked for her, her algebra tiles, 
and then she went on with confidence working on what she had to work on. Chastity created an experience that worked for her. And not only is it changing the student experience, it's fundamentally changing the whole system. Our teachers now have to create, they do tons of work in the background to allow for this flexible environment. And now they're just guides of the learning process. Our schedules have changed, our grading systems have changed, even our physical space has changed to allow for the dynamic nature of our students' choices because what they create, we don't want to limit. We want to allow for the school experiences that they want to create for themselves. And the early results are in. Our schools are on track to beat even our best schools in Chicago that we built last decade. More importantly though, we have high demand from parents and teachers who want to work there, students who want to go there. And the best part is that our students are now self-aware uh, about themselves as learners. They know what works for them. They are also creative problem solvers. They also are learning that hard work will lead to great results. And they're having a lot of fun doing it because they're creating it for themselves. They have no one else to blame. For 100 years, people say the system has never changed. Right? That we should, uh, a country like ours, with the abundance that we have, should never be below average in any kind of global rankings. And I think the problem is that we have people who are telling our students and our teachers and our parents what to do instead of listening to them. If you're interested in our public education system at all as a citizen, as a parent, as a teacher, a practitioner, a policymaker, I ask you of this. Don't support policies that tell our teachers how to teach, our students how to learn, or even our parents where they have to send their kids. Instead, support policies that empower our teachers with true decision rights to make choices that fit their learning best. In my 15 years of doing this, I've seen our teachers, our students, and our parents come up with creative solutions far beyond what we could have done as administrators and what we could definitely do from a state office. And we just need to create the system that allows for that. And if we do, then I'm pretty sure, not even just 100 years from now, but only 10 years from now, our school system will look a lot better than it does today. Thank you.